Welcome everybody to Lunatic Froggy. Today we have Lunatic Mom with Lady Talk Sunday. Mom. Yeah, I, I've seen that one. I actually wanted to go because to Walgreens to get it because my knees were really hurting so bad last night and everything else. So oh, I it wanted works to... wonders. That's why I just rolled it on my shoulder. Yeah, because so I wanted to do that. At the end of the day, between the ibuprofen and that, it's the only thing that's been keeping it so I can continue doing what I love doing. And, right. I mean... Part of Froggy is gaming. I've always gamed. For the last eight years, nine years, mm -hmm. I've gamed. Well, I can't take the gaming out of Froggy. Can't. No, it's okay. Because, you know, sometimes and you have to be occupied with something. If that's what you like, that's a good thing. Exactly. And I like, I'm, I'm tr like, I have a gaming channel. I just don't really use it. Like, mm -hmm. I throw up a video once every five months. I do stream on Twitch, though, and it's like, you know what? I'm going to keep my gaming to Twitch, and I'm going to keep Lunatic Froggy to YouTube. Because right. that's who Lunatic Froggy is, YouTube. Right. No, that's it. That's it. And the other one that's is Froggy thing. Love G, because, you know, OG Froggy. That's but it. at the end of the day, it's like, I got a game. Mm -hmm. and I have to. I don't game. I become a bitch. And Roy goes, it's because you well, don't have that relaxer in your life. Even though it causes you pain to sit there and game. But that's a comfort because you learn that. You already know what to expect. You learn that pain part of it. You learn this. You learn that. So that is your comfort zone that you know what is happening already. Exactly. But if something else you would do, then it's like, oh shit, what am I going to do? Like my kids make fun of me when I go, especially like I go outside to do stuff in the yard or cut the grass or to do stuff around the pool, whatever. So then when I walk in, they already see me. When I walk in holding on to everything, they like, well, mom's out of commission, five to 10 business days. <laughs> fucking same all these walks and shit Roy's like we need to get you back out there exercising because of course my feet are swollen because I ain't doing shit besides sitting around right which is you feel have your feet down so then everything exactly. is yeah. and so like walking and stuff has really helped it and we love going exploring different yeah that's good paths and stuff and he goes i understand you can't do a lot so let jordan and i record right but do what you can so that's it. like when we went to the goldman's bridge we did what we could mm -hmm. i mean i threw up a video of like jordan you got to see all of jordan's experience and no that's nice but at the end of the day I still got to go out and do something. It was a three-hour drive there, a three-hour drive right. back, and plus that's, walking. That's what I'm goes, saying. Okay, so you're going to be out of commission for about a week. That gives me a week to get you back in gear. Yeah. <laughs> I have no, a but that's how, that's I have how a it is. coming up in June to go to Michigan, which I'm going to stop okay. by. I'll let you know what day I leave, so that way I can stop by and say hi and you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, it does because it would be nice. Because, like I said, like every time, I always ask somebody asking, like even my daughter, because the one she lives at home, so she knows what I'm at all the time. But the other one, she doesn't live at home. So she's like, "Mom, are you gonna be home? Mom, can I do this? Mom, can?" I? I'm like, "Oh, I don't know. You would have to ask me in the morning when I wake up because I don't know what I'm gonna do." <laughs> exactly, and that's why, like today. Like, yeah. Okay, we've been planning to record for like two yeah. weeks now. You got sick and then shit yeah. happened. And, I mean, life fucking. No, it's both at the same time. Yeah, no, but things like, like you hey, know. Mom, what are you doing today? <laughs> well, nothing. I woke up to the storm and I'm like, oh shit, I ain't gonna do nothing because I was thinking about going cutting the grass, but now I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> the boys can cut the grass. Oh, Kyle cut it last week because I was ready to. And dad was sitting out on the patio and he was like, maybe I should cut the grass. I'm like, and I didn't want him because he, he works all day. I feel right. bad. So I told him, I said, no, maybe why don't we wait till like Thursday or something? Because it's right before the weekend. So it's going to look nice. And 
he went to sleep and Kyle went in the garage and took the lawnmower and cut the grass. Aww. I'm like, I'm like, what happened? Like, I knew you would go get it. <laughs> I'm so like, well, I appreciate it. At I do appreciate it. Like being like, hey, no. no, he's been nice and everything else. Yeah, like to all these people out there think that he's very disrespectful and bad and this and that. No, everyone has a day and a moment everyone and yes unfortunately all these people in here because like i said having boys and then they all pick on each other and like hey hey look what this and that or sometimes like when they record my husband that doesn't even doesn't even know right (laughs) so So they like oh the only issue i had was when kyle hit his dad over the head with a beer bottle or well well he, he he didn't mean to like he wasn't he wanted to scare him he wanted to like because he was sitting right. like you know behind the couch so he was ready like he's gonna hit him on on a couch but it went to his head because like no, he it swung was, it it was um when he quit a job and got a new job the same day i reacted to it Oh, I don't remember because I know that he he's like, I didn't mean to. I want to just scare him because, yeah, I was angry, but I just want to scare him that if I would hit him and it, and it didn't go the way I wanted to. Right. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then we were like, see, now I hope you didn't give your father a concussion or something happened to him. Right. And he felt bad after that. But like he said, but of course, all these freaking people, they automatically grab the camera. Like, oh, man. Oh, man. I was going to hit that. Right. I'm like, how is that funny? Because it's fucking funny. It is. So that's why he sometimes, sometimes when he comes home from work and they all like sit around and everything else, like, like, you know, laughing and talking, then he walks in and he's like, what's, what, what, what are you people laughing about? What are you going to do? Uh, <laughs> what are you, what are you planning? Me? Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you hiding? Who's going to jump out somewhere? Dude, and I'm like, oh my God, he's always on alert. Um, of Kyle getting hit by the car, the prank. Kyle got hit by the oh car. Oh my God. You did some amazing acting. I was in tears. Oh my God. And I felt bad after that because I even told Kyle, I said, no, this was bad because that's the only thing I'm always scared and worried and believe it or not. And it kind of got me thinking that it was bad. And to wake him up to that, that was bad. Oh, I yeah. felt bad. <laughs> but you did some amazing acting in there. Um. <laughs> and I know you've been in on some of those pranks, especially the Ouija board one. Oh yeah. Some of them I was on. And the one that they took, actually they took down the, the video. I cannot find it nowhere that because my husband, they were watching sports or something, whatever they were watching. And he's constantly, so he's like, Kyle, go get me something to eat. I would like uh Wendy's or Arby's or whatever he said. So, and Kyle's like, we already ate dinner. It's like, but I'm still hungry. I'm like, okay. Well, I'm like, Kyle, go. And then he's like, mom, I got it. I'm like, what? I'll go get that food, but we're going to prank him. I'm like, what are you going to do? We cannot put shit in his food. That's disgusting. Right. And he's like, no, no, I'm not going to do nothing to his food. So he put a crazy glue on one side of the cup and he was holding like that and he did. And then he handed it to him that way. So then he went on his hand and he grabbed it and he was drinking it in, because first he loves his soda. So first they right. the soda and he wanted to put it down and it wouldn't go down. And he lifted up and he had his hand held like this and the cup still <laughs> stuck to his. <laughs> and then he's shaking it. He's shaking it. The cop's still there. I'm like, stop spilling the soda. He's like, what did you freaking people do? And I, I couldn't. I, I was laughing, but <laughs> <laughs> I knew about it. So then I told him, I said, come on, let's let's see what happened. Maybe they did something. Let me see. So I kind of got a water and I, you know, because they said to put cold water because it gets yeah. hard. So and then you just, you know, do it like, you know, s- scrape it off a little bit. I said, stop ripping it off because it's going to rip off your skin and this and that. Oh, he was angry. But they took it down because that's dangerous because like right. so nobody can do it. And I have I couldn't find that at all. Nowhere. I'm sure Kyle has it somewhere. 
he probably has it somewhere on his computer because like you know like they download it so they keep it yeah. so he probably has it but i'm telling you this one was the best ever and then my husband was so angry at me he's like you freaking knew about it you did it you did it i'm like i didn't do shit i didn't do nothing you can't prove it <laughs> yeah but he's like yeah you washing my hand and you laughing your ass off you knew about it <laughs> because he was so funny like he's he opened his hand like that and the cup is still sitting and he's shaking it get it out get it out. <laughs> oh my god i'm telling you sometimes yeah sometimes i'm on those things but i always tell kai i said if you want to prank him prank him something that it's funny nice so because i don't want to hurt him my plushies He's supposed to be making making it so people could get plushies of Lunatic Mom, Lunatic Dad, and Lunatic Kyle. Well, I'm not sure exactly because right now he's kind of concentrating because he's going tomorrow on a trip to Florida. And I'm freaking out. <laughs> Why are you freaking out and why is he going to Florida? Because he's going for concert. Yeah. And he's very trustworthy to people and everything else. And that scares me because, yes, I understand he's going to concert and somebody might start talking to him and everything else. And he, he's very trustworthy to people. He thinks everybody's nice. so, And that scares me. Just remind him, don't get in vehicles with strangers. Don't no, accept I, anything no, from strangers. I tried to tell him. He's like, Mom, I know that. I know. I'm like you get yourself in the moment because like i said the excitement and everything else then he's the impulse that's the impulse right. and that's what scares me because i'm i'm like okay if he would have someone with him then maybe they would kind of like at least talk him out of it or something like no like, no we're not doing you that. Don't that. Need yeah. that alcohol yeah or something you know and i'm like I'm just scared that he might befriend somebody and whatever he's staying at, that not to invite and everything else. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm really freaking out. I think out. he's smart enough. Uh, no, he is, but I'm just worried, you know, because you're that's. You're going to be worried. I yeah, see no matter you what. Every day and worry. Yeah. Um, my daughter got these earplugs that you really can't even tell they're earplugs. I was going to send you a set of earplugs. You know oh, okay. Why? You can hear, like, the people. You can't hear the surroundings. I was going to send you a set, because you can't tell they're in your ear, because they're oh, okay. uh, circled. They have oh, a circle, so they're like, just like literally put they're put an right, right here. So oh, you're okay. not going to notice them. They're not going to notice them. I was oh, okay. gonna, so that way when dad came home you could have the boys record it and when dad came home you could just ignore him and be like I don't hear nothing <laughs> yeah because first thing he comes in oh hi how was your day good did you get me cigarettes really? no <laughs> yeah. so imagine if you just ignored him oh my god you would be pissed <laughs> What's wrong with you? What the hell's going on? Why aren't you responding to me? Okay, fine. Be that way. Don't talk to me. We see how that's going to work. I ain't going to talk to yours. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> then you pull out your earplug. You said what? <laughs> You'd be like, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I was overstimulated. I just needed a minute yeah, to myself. Break. Yes, I needed a minute so I can be quiet. <laughs> No, my daughter yeah. got them, and I'm thinking about getting them because, like, especially, I have a really hard time sleeping as it is. Then I hear mm -hmm. my dog's toenails. Then I hear my dog's breathing, my dog's snoring, the fan, because it's in Texas, and it's 900 fucking degrees, and we don't have eight to see, so all we have mm -hmm. is fans going. So I hear that. Then I hear the puppies, and it's like, I'm not getting it. Okay. How are the little like, puppies doing? They are fucking adorable. Oh. That's why I'm going to Missouri or Michigan in June. Because okay. I'm not taking care of extra puppies longer than I need to. So I'm dropping right. them off at their owners. Um, oh, one, okay. uh, the female 
she is going to Roy's niece, who mm -hmm. is pregnant, as a baby gift. Oh, that's so, so cute. So it will be Roy's great niece's guard dog. Yeah, no, definitely. And it's always nice when the babies grow up with a little dog. Right. Because that's their best friend, and they know to take care of each other. Exactly. So, and she loves cuddling. There is not a day that I do not walk out into the living room, and she is on the floor. Nine chances out of ten, she's going to be on the bed, cuddle right here. Next to Roy. Oh, it's just so cute. And the boys, they'll go up there and they'll cuddle for like five, ten minutes. And then they walk back down on the cold floor. Oh, okay. The little girl's like, nope. I'm just going right to sit here. here. And he has a box fan in his window. So there's like spaces like this where she can mm -hmm. crawl out of. Oh, bed. my goodness. Let's yeah, it's that right him. there. She will not go near it. Because she's scared of the fan. No, the she, just wa she just wants to cuddle Roy. Yeah, she's got a warm place to be, so she's yeah, nice. <laughs> she's like, nope, mine. Yeah. And then Tank gets up there, and Roy's like, so do I get bed today? I'm like, <laughs> we might need to switch beds. And he goes, no, my mom gave me this bed. There you go. It's one of those hospital, it's those Tempur-Pedic beds where like the yeah, head like, goes up, the feet okay. go up. It has oh, a yeah, that's very comfortable. in it. That's very comfortable, yes, definitely. And it got to the point where Tank would literally grab the remote for uh, the bed. Like she would grab it with her mouth and sit there and lick the massaging button until it started. Oh my gosh. So she'd lay flat out, arms sprawled out, Legs straight behind her, and she's just sprawled out like and just uh, massaging it. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, yeah, that's good. And Coco and Chomper, Coco's or Chomper, he's being a picky boy and is not eating his dog food. But we, oh. have, we have these that I've been feeding him. Okay. He don't get a lot of them. He just gets enough so he gets a little bit of protein and crude right. fat in his system. But yeah. they're doing good. Coco is getting big. She's like, I am not. She's back to her normal self. That's good. That's so good. How is Kyle doing? I heard he wanted to be a teacher. Well, he actually did for an interview because he likes drumming and I was up for um like a music school yeah but he's like like because he had this trip going on so he didn't want to start it right because then he would have to leave and everything else and then they said that they if they gonna hire him that he would have to he cannot take days off because that's a private lessons and everything that people pay for it so right. well those kids would not get the lesson for the days that he's gone Oh, damn. So, yeah. So that's why he's like, Mom, I, I really liked it, but I'm just going to wait. And after that, I'm going to try to see if I can find one somewhere else. So Right. And there are places. And, like, he could, he could open up his own studio. Right. He was thinking about it. But he's like, first, like, he would have to, because, like, right in a, in a house, he really cannot have it. Right. And, you know, so he was thinking like, you know, he was kind of researching around the town if they would be able to like a rent to like a room, like, you know, like there's a building and it's like a room. Yeah. But some of these people like because that's a drums that he's playing, that's loud. You can literally so, put up fucking stuff to make it quiet. Yeah, but they, you know, like when you're renting it, they, don't, they have their own rules, what they wanted to have right. it done to their space and everything else. There's a lot of shit going on. So he's like, why does it have to be so hard? What I'm are like, those well, red birds? Cardinals? Yeah, I got one sitting out on my uh, trailer. Yeah, see? Uh, they say that when you see a cardinal right by your side or by near you or, you know, by your house, that there is a visit from heaven from the uh, people that pass in your see, life. See, my grandma's favorite bird was a cardinal. 
Yeah, see? So there she's visiting, right? Right. So. Which I love my grandma to pieces. She used yeah. to fucking laugh at us that we all needed to be put in a bubble. <laughs> my, between my brother and I, my mom spent more time in the hospital than anything else. I was the one yeah. that constantly got strep throat, allergic reactions, high fevers out of nowhere. Like, at the age of seven days, no, five days. I was five days old when my mom had to bring me to the hospital because homie decided to start running 103.4 temperature. Couldn't get it down. Oh, what do you mean? Goodness. Ice baths and everything else wouldn't go down. They couldn't. Tylenol would not drop it. They did the yeah. spinal tap. They found out what it was. They treated me for it. And then I was out of the hospital like four days later. My brother has gone through six or seven knee surgeries. Oh, my goodness. Thyroid cancer. Uh, testicle twisting. Oh, my goodness. He got... There's a disease. Uh, it's like... It was gone for the longest time, but it's... He got some rare fucking disease from changing a diaper. Oh, yeah, that, I've heard about that, yeah. And... Like... He's had five or six mini strokes. He's had, um, he was at work one day and they were pouring the molten steel mm. and he noticed that it was forming a cap. So he started getting everybody out. Well, he went in for one last check and before he could hit the door, it blew him out of the door. Oh, my goodness. So, he had, like, metal in his face, okay? Oh, my goodness. Um, like, literally, if you put me, my sister, my sister had Lyme's disease and a whole bunch of other different disorders. If you put us, she had cervical cancer, I had cervical cancer. Oh, my goodness. You put us all together, my mom should have just fucking put us in a bubble. Yeah. I'm so accident prone. My daughter can't even walk up a stairs without falling down said stairs. Her dog just looks at her like again. Yeah. Because she does it so often. My son, he fucking hurts himself constantly. It'd be like, Bubba, where'd you get that bruise? What bruise? You know, the one that's like across your face. Oh, I hit myself in the face with my locker. Oh my goodness. Bubba, where did you get that bruise? What bruise? And you point out where he got it, and he's like, Yeah. I think I fell. I'm like, and a lot of it has to deal with the simple fact that when he was like four, we were chilling, talking. He wanted up on the boat. It was on land, on a trailer. He wanted up on the boat. We were talking. We were all standing right there, talking. The next thing we see is my son jumping off said boat and cracking his head against a freaking coffee table. Oh my gosh. It's like we were right there and we could not stop it. Yeah, no, that happens. <laughs> there was a, he was playing chase, or Deb, him, uh, Roy's uh, godson and goddaughter, and... My daughter were playing tech. There was two other kids, I think. I don't know. There was a group of them. And Roy had an RV. So they all climbed through the driver's seat, jumped over to the middle seat, and cl climbed out. My son climbed over, got up to the middle section, climbed over. And got out. And by the time my son got out of the seat, like literally step by step, one person in front of him, one person behind him, nobody seen his leg fall through the shaft where the shifter should have been and oh cut his whole entire knee open. Oh my gosh. It's like kids were right there. They were just playing and he 
cuts his leg open. It's like, at this point in time, my kids, my sister's kids, uh, my brother's kids, we all should have just been in bubbles. <laughs> yeah, sometimes that is, like I said, when I, when the kids were younger, that's always, I'm like, I I was really afraid that, that they go to school, the DCF is going to show up and take them away because that's how they always beat up. Uh, and always. A lot of times it's they beat up on each other. Yeah. Well, my friend had um, DCF actually show up at her door because her autistic son beat up on the non-autistic son. Oh, my goodness. The non-autistic son went to school and said, my brother beat me up like his back was hurting they ended up taking him to the doctor the next day because it was still mm. hurting but he went to school and he's like yeah my back hurts because my brother beat the crap out of me and my parents didn't do nothing they were busy gaming what they failed to realize was that we were recording so we sent her the video recording of look Here's where he did this. You got up within 30 seconds to stop the fight. Right. And DCF was like, oh, well, it's unfunded, but this, 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 this. And she's yeah. like, look, I'll go to parenting classes. I'll go to therapy. I'll take all the fucking medication you want. But at the end of the day, I am a good mother. I'm a single mother of four fucking kids. Right. Well, that's what they did with us. They sent the DCFS school, sent the DCFS because Lawrence was playing with our dog and was putting his forearm, you know, like into the dog's mouth. But because of his sensory disorder, his nerves and everything is like very underneath the skin. So it bruises very easy. So he went to school with it like that. And they were like, oh, what happened? Uh, this and that. Do you get punished at home? And of course, he's a little kid. Yeah, I do. So they didn't ask anything further. They just called the CFS. They sent them home and they came in on Saturday and questioning every single kid and us separately and everything else. And then after, like, finally they questioned the kids and me and my husband are sitting and they're like, okay, so what is your type of punishment if the kids do something wrong? And I tell them, I said, I'm either going to send them in a corner, they have to stand for a certain amount of time, or they sit on a couch quietly not to touch one another because I can I can deal with it. Right. So that's my punishment. But And then he's like, oh, so the, here is recorded that the child's been abused because he got bruises on him. I'm like, okay. So I said, uh, do, you want me, do you mind if I'm going to call this child up here? Oh, no, no. So I called Lawrence and I said, Lawrence, come here. And the dog was inside the house the same way. And I said, show this, that, you know, like this man, uh, you know, like, how do you play with your dog? So, of course, he went by Charlotte because her name was Charlotte. And he started playing and he's like, you know, like tackle her. They fall on the ground and this and that. So then he would like push her and then she would go at him and he would put his arm up. So she would kind of like not bite him, but like a gnaw on him. Yeah. And I'm like, that's where his bruises come from. So what do you want me to do? Get rid of the kid or get rid of the dog? <laughs> <laughs> and this man would looked at me. He's like, no. From all what the kids said, you guys are very loving family. They all care about each other. They all care about you guys. And it seems like you guys well take care of these kids. So he's like, no, I'm going to put nah, unfunded and never to be reported again. Right. So I'm like, what a freaking asshole this principal was that, that sent the DCFS without even, without even communicating with us. Like, you know, to say, okay, fine, I'm going to have a meeting with the parents and ask what's going on, this and that. No, nothing. She just sent the DCFS. Well, I oh, I had two family members that loved to call DCF on me. Why? Because my son would go to their house and eat and say he was starving. Mm -hmm. So one day we went to the casino all you can eat buffet. And we had a video recording of us filling Jordan's plate. 
And I mean filling it like you would a grown ass man. 17 plates. We're like, okay, you, you full. He goes, yeah, I full. Okay. Now, remind you, he also had dessert in there. He had a small bowl of ice cream after 17 plates of food. Yeah. We get five blocks from the casino. Remind you, he walked out to the valet, waited for the valet, got in said vehicle, drove, rode five blocks, five, crying, I'm starving. Yeah. Yeah. I said, Jordan, you just ate 17 plates of food. No, ma, I starving. I hungry. Yeah. So That's, he's laughing. Uh... As we're recording him, throwing a massive temper. Yeah. Temper tantrum. He's starving. He's hungry. We don't feed him. We neglect him. He's saying this, right? Mm -hmm. We bring him. To the store, we pick up sandwiches, or, you know, bologna, bread, because we spent the night in the hotel, potato chips, all of that, right? This boy ate eight more sandwiches on top of everything he just ate not even that long ago. Yeah. We wake up halfway through the night, and he's finished off five bags of chips. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> DCF comes because, of course, again, starving man. Called because we starve our child. I said, sir, we just took our son. Literally, we just got back from the casino and DCF was waiting for us. I said, we just took our son to the casino for an all-you-can-eat buffet. Do you want to see what happened? And he goes, sure, let me see. So I showed him. I showed him the video of my son eating 17 plates of fucking food. And then eating eight more sandwiches and crying he's starving to death. I said, would you like to see the food in my house? He goes, yeah, sure. Now, at that point in time, we were on a program where one of the churches would bring sandwiches. Um... And we literally would take all of these sandwiches and everything else. And all of a sudden, he's like, okay, so you got all these sandwiches. My son goes in, he grabs a sandwich, he throw, unwraps it, throws it in the microwave himself for a minute. He goes, I hungry. Yeah. I'm like, okay, Jordan, go ahead and eat. So he sits down and he eats. Now, remind you, my son is five years old and knows how to use the microwave. Yeah. Why? Because at that time, my son, I got tired of going, getting up to make a sandwich, and he memorized how to use the microwave. Mm -hmm. So, he gets himself a sandwich. He sits down, he eats. Not even two minutes later, he goes, Mom, I'm hungry. I said, go get you a sandwich. He eats another sandwich. Still talking to the DCF worker. Next thing you know, my son comes up, Mom, I'm hungry. I said, go get yourself another sandwich. He ate 12 sandwiches in the process of me talking to a D DCF worker. And he's like... Do you feed him like this all the time? I go, ma'am, sir, I spend about $800 on food a month just for him. Yeah. Plus all the sandwiches we get for free from the church, plus going to the food shelves and Rudy's Pantry and all this other stuff. I, all, most of my money goes on food for him. Yeah. So if he's going to work places and say he's starving, it's because he has disabilities. Finally, he doesn't right? remember, and he's you know like exactly. the, the overstimulation and everything else, and that's what he's saying. Exactly, and I'm like, so at this point in time, I get a social worker coming in because they finally diagnosed my son at the age of six with schizophrenia. 
which means he doesn't live in this reality. He lives in a right. different reality, even if it's in remission. He lives in a different reality. Yeah, he's, yeah he kind of has it all his self set up, whatever he's exactly. got. Exactly. So he's constantly hungry. Well, then they diagnosed him with PICA. Because he would put random shit in his mouth constantly. He had to chew on something constantly. Yeah. And if he didn't have something to chew on, he would chew on his lip. Oh. So, of course, he has sores on his lip. Well, why does he have sores on his lip? You must slap him. No, he has pica. Which means he's chewing on his, on his lip, yeah. lip. Well, why is he chewing on his lip? Well, because ask he him. already it went through 12 fucking chew, you know, those right, uh, like picks or something, yeah. And they're like, well, what can you do for this? Therapy. Well, is he in therapy? Yes, he's in therapy. I'm in therapy. I've gone to parenting classes at this point in time. I'm just like, finally, I got a caseworker that actually gave a shit and she's like, anytime they found out where we lived we'd have DCF on us and it's like <sighs> he has no food he has no this yeah that, no, no that's crazy clothes. it's like first of all my kid is the last time I've seen DCF my kid was 15 years old and I said you know what he's 15 years old if you don't think his ass can get in there and fucking wash his own clothes there's an issue. Yeah. If you don't think my, if you think I have to go in there and force my 15 year old son to take a fucking shower, there's an issue. Yep. If you think I have to go out there and cook my 15 year old son a snack in between his snack and dinner, there's a fucking issue. There's food in the pantry, there's food in the fridge, there's clothes in his closet that are clean he has a bed he has clean sheets on his bed he has a blanket he has his own fucking bathroom with shampoo conditioner the whole nine yards please tell me where the fuck i'm failing right because i'd love to know yeah. Well, he's schizophrenic. You should be making him take a shower. Oh, would you like me to fucking go bathe him too? Right, at that age. Yeah. Better yet, I'll go spray him off with a hose. Right. No, at that's least then crazy. he's clean. Yeah. Finally, we just have bucket and we turn a sprinkler on. Go play in the sprinkler. You're clean. Yeah. <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's it's it like no sometimes it's crazy when people like that that they don't know shit and how many times the dcfs that they are going and not following up on the actual people that they should be following up right. and then the kids end up dead okay well, well let's put it this way i did a whole episode on will Trill where he talked about his childhood trauma I did a second episode that will be coming out here shortly. I got to edit that and it go up tomorrow. But, again, his dad hit his head against a radiator. Nine chances out of ten, there was bruises. Why was the school not involved? Right. They could see it. The so many times you see DCF showing up on honest people's door who literally are working their ass off, trying to make the best they can for their yeah. children. And they still get punished for and it. And they get punished for it. You mm -hmm. got mothers out here who are drinking, doing crack, which uh, I am going to react to some of those videos because there are horrible mothers mm -hmm. out there that I would love to choke. Out here smoking crack, doing all these other things, and within a week, three weeks later, oh well, they took parenting classes, so they get their so they good, back. yeah. Uh -huh. Roy's godchildren got taken away because 
Mom was producing cooking meth with said children in said room as cooking meth. Oh, my gosh. Got sent with the father. It and the kids ended up still having unsupervised visitation. Oh my gosh. And literally the father was still paying child support while having the kids. No, that's not right. They ended up going living back with, you know, the mom. Thirteen year old kid out there smoking weed with the mom. No, I'm that's... sorry. I might enjoy my CBD gummies because they take the pain away for 5.5 fucking seconds. But if I caught my kid doing any type of weed, mm-hmm. there would not be an ass left to sit on. Because guess what? He don't like taking prescriptions. He don't need to be taking narcotics. Right. And that's the thing. My son goes, why the fuck do I need to take a drug when I don't even like taking my medication? As a matter of fact, um, somewhere around here on my table is his nighttime medication. Why? Because I can't get up in time for school and then I sleep all throughout school, Mom. I can't take that medication. Right. Yeah, that's that's because he now knows how to make the difference and everything else, and he knows what to do. So, yeah, exactly. if that makes him feel like that, why should he take it? Well, and then there's days where he's just like, I can't take it no more. I need to take my medication. I need to stop being in dickhead mode. Literally, I allow my son to say he's in dickhead mode because sometimes he is. Yeah, no, but I'm saying, like, you know, if he recognizes those things, then it's a good thing. And it's not because, you know, DCF and therapy and all of that shit's been in his life. It's because Mm -hmm. I look at him and I'm like, dude, I'm bipolar and I'm not medicated. Right. Well, how do you control it, mom? I put myself into a reality, into a place where I can calm down. Every morning I get up and I game. Why? Because... If I work on something strenuous when I wake up, it sets me off into a horrible fucking mood. So I game. It's not strenuous. I don't know if you're like that where you just gotta like start your day off a certain way or otherwise you end up in a horrible mood. Yeah, no, sometimes I'm like, I'm already have like so extreme headache or something. And I really have so much stuff on my mind going because like I can deal with things, even though anything that maybe not be that serious, but to me it is. And I have to calm yourself down and you have to like separate yourself what I'm doing. And I'm going to do this and I'll wait for that because I can deal with all that. Exactly. You got to separate yourself into different mm-hmm. uh, parts of the day where like, okay, yes. I'm doing this today. Tomorrow I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. And the next day I'll go ahead and do this because I can't deal with all of this shit today. Yep. Now, question of the day. Okay. Do you have a routine that you follow? Well, I try to follow because, like, wake up all the time in the morning at the same time almost. Because if I don't, then I'm, like, very weak and, like, just laying in the bed, very weak. My head hurts so bad that sometimes I feel like I'm going to puke. Oh, I know. So, yeah, that's really extreme. So I have to I have to get up and I have to do at least something. Like, you know, I might not do a lot of things because sometimes... My body won't let me do things, a lot of right. things. So I have to kind of separate myself. Okay, I'm going to do this today and I'm going to do this tomorrow or I'm going to do that. So slowly. And then I just try to help out everyone. Like I said, the only thing I can do is to help out everyone. If anybody wants me to take them somewhere to pick up something or drop right. something off, that's, I feel like, at least I'm trying to do something helpful. And then uh, by afternoon, I try to make dinner and then I'm done for the day because I can move. <laughs> 
I figured it was uh, to the point where you just like, you know what? You, yeah, you can do this. And then on top of it, the kids uh, when it's a uh, dinner time and I make dinner and everything else. So by the time I'm like, so I'm walking already by the walls or something holding on to because I like losing balance. So now they laughing at me. How much alcohol did you drink today? <laughs> Not enough. <laughs> I'm like. None of it, because if I did, none of it would be done. I would be laying somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I might not be in pain for a day, but... Yeah, but I wouldn't do nothing. And then you all would be asking, what happened? What happened? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> it's, it's so, so yeah. funny when they're like, how much have you had to drink today? Because you're like literally... Walking by the wall and this yeah. and that, yeah. <laughs> I have my dogs trained. I have Coco and Chopper trained. Like, if they notice I'm getting up slow, one will get up in front of me and stand, like, this way in front of me. So, mm -hmm. I can, they'll help me get up. Yeah. And then, both of them will walk on both sides of me, just so that way, like, I have that support lean. Cause yeah. Coco is part St. Bernard, and if you know anything about St. Bernard's, they like to lean. Yeah, they are very lovable. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So she uses her lean for my benefit, because if I'm having, let's say, a bad time on my right side, she's going to be on the right side, so I can lean up against her. Yeah. And Chomper's on the left side, because it's less work for him. Yeah. Hey. Now, sometimes you just have to make the best of it what you can. Exactly. And that's why if anything happens to these two, I am getting one of the biggest, baddest motherfucking dogs. You know why? Because that bitch can carry my ass to the bathroom if need be. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> well, they have those... Uh, I can't remember the name of them, but they literally, on two legs, their head stands about four and a half feet off the ground. Yeah, I've seen it. I forgot what is it, like Himalayan's dogs or something? Yeah. yeah. It's basically a big old bear. Yeah, like I'm that. Gonna, I'm going to get one of those. Why? Because if <laughs> I need help up, that dog's going to get down and help me up. It's yeah. going to have the body to do it. Yeah. I am not a small woman. I am a very big woman, okay? I had to buy a special chair for big women. Um, big people actually, big and tall. From big and tall. You yeah. Know what I mean. So, at the end of the day, I need a big dog. And yeah. That's my that that's my story and I'm sticking to it. That's but it. No, even Roy said I will always need a dog with me because I could literally. I was sitting back here, and they're up there, and we're there's one room in between us, and I'm yelling top of my lungs. My windows open. Roy's windows open, and he could not hear me. Oh my goodness! I had to text my son. I'm like, you know, one of these days, I'm going to fall, bust my fucking head open, and nobody's going to hear it. All they're going to hear is a boom. Yeah. He goes, well, at least we know something happened, and we can come check, because the whole house is going to shake. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why sometimes I tell them, too, I said, if I would fall, nobody would know, because nobody checks on me. But that's why I learned how to walk by the wall. I use the right. furniture to hold on to and stuff. Like My mom just no. carries case. But my mom, she's one of those people. Well, I have a I have a cane in the house and I have a cane in the car. Mom, if you need a cane in the house, you also need a cane to say car. She decides not to bring cane to car and wipes out and takes out her knee. Yeah, no, that's that's not good. That's why, that's why sometimes they laugh at me and they like, oh, we have to buy you a cane. I'm like, then I have something to beat your asses with. <laughs> yeah, I, I was beating dad with a spoon. <laughs> oh, I told him, I said, your ass is going to get killed. 
you know, bother me like this. And oh, that's yeah. what the spoon is. That's how I grew up. When the spoon came out, we knew where our place was. <laughs> it was funny. I was reacting to Dad uh, when you were ironing Ky Kyle's shirt. And Dad yeah. was bothering you. And I'm like, Dad's going to get hit in the head with the iron. And I said it out loud. And Roy goes, so that's why Dad hasn't been around lately. Mom knocked him out. <laughs> I'm like, no, he's no. on a hiatus. He's quitting smoking. He's sick. Yeah, no, he's uh, like, he's trying to, like I said, he is really, like, he's been a little bit better tolerating food, like what he eats, that he doesn't puke. But he's still, he's like, my stomach still hurts. Like, so he's like taking the, you know, thumbs and all that to help right. him kind of. And I told him, I said, well, whenever you're ready, like, you know, you're going to feel better, then that's when you're going to feel better. You can you cannot help it, you know. It's and like, I know his stubborn ass, he's still at work. Yes, he's still at work, and he works, like, like he's trying to, like, you know, keep himself busy because, like, he said that he cannot smoke in his truck, so he that's why he helps him a little bit right. to do it because when he only gets stopped somewhere, then he has a cigarette. But he said that when he was sick like that, then he had to stop on the side of the road to puke because he's not going to puke in a car truck. All right. So it's like he was kind of like very annoyed how it was because like he's like, I don't mind driving. I don't mind sitting in a truck. But when you're sick, and especially if it's a traffic or something, then you're like, Oh my gosh! When I can can I get my to my destination? I'm I'm already done and over with. So he's exactly. irritated and everything. So I'm hoping that he's gonna get a little bit more better. But I told him I said you have to keep yourself hydrated because that's when it's gonna help you. Your body kind of start processing things. Exactly. Because if you're dehydrated, then then it's gonna get another freaking ass set of shit going on. All right, Mama, we've been streaming or er, recording for an hour and 47 minutes. Oh, my goodness. That was quite a time. It flew by. Yeah. Well, I'll end up breaking it into two different sections. So, if, okay. If, yeah, no, that would be better. So, do you have any final words for these lovely people? Well, I hope that everyone is not very judgmental and actually try to be very reasonable and helpful and understanding. And every time to wake up in the morning to say, if I do one good deed, that's going to make somebody else's life better. So I wish everyone would kind of live that way because that's the best way to kind of make yourself feel better and maybe somebody else's day better. So I hope everyone stays safe and good and healthy. Exactly. And one smile a day could change That's somebody's it. world. Yes. All right, everybody. We hope you have an amazing time. We love you all. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.